Good afternoon readers, it's Tilly here from Tilly Shelf. This is a bit of a weird one really because it's a video about a video and that video is not a booktube video but it is a video that I have made and this is a platform on which I share videos that I've made so I feel like it's kind of fair enough to share it with you. Did that make any sense whatsoever? Probably not. I promise I'll reward you for watching this video by talking about books for a bit at the end of it, so bear with me. So basically on the end card of this video I'm going to link a video called Introducing Fast and I'll also link that video in the description down below from a channel called Fast Calais. Spoilers, I actually created that channel and I'm kind of in charge of putting content on there. There's a couple of videos that I've got lined up that have been made by other volunteers. Um, it's something that I'm taking on a, on a voluntary basis because the association didn't have a YouTube channel and I said kind of think you probably should because that's the kind of stupid thing that I commit myself to doing. So what I would really really love for you to do is for you to watch this video then click on that link on the end card of this video and go and show that other video um, a little bit of love and a little bit of support and, and help that channel to sort of get started. So Introducing Fast is a video that I made last week following undertaking some voluntary work with Fast, the first aid support team, that's what Fast stands for, in Calais, Brussels and Dunkirk working with people stuck on the border um, essentially waiting to get to the UK who are stuck in, in France and Belgium wanting to get to Britain. That was the second time that I went out to volunteer. I also went previously earlier in May and I am going again in July. Planning for organising and attending these trips is one of the reasons, one of many reasons, that I have been more absent from booktube lately. Something that some of you have surprisingly actually noticed, so thank you. I didn't really expect anyone to realise. So I explain it all further obviously in the video that I am linking but basically for those of you to whom Calais means absolutely nothing it is a town on the French coast where a lot of the ferry traffic between the UK and France connects to between Calais and Dover generally speaking is one of the major routes. It has therefore always been a focus point for people trying to get into the UK through both standard and non-standard routes. Since about 2015 the numbers of people involved have significantly increased and that is linked to the situations that we've seen in the Mediterranean, that is linked to um, ongoing conflicts in countries such as Sudan and Syria and it is linked to also to the policies that other EU countries are pursuing with regard to migration and the idea that we have seen emerging of this kind of fortress Europe mentality. Around this time it started to make the news that there was this camp in Calais that was referred to as the jungle and it was presented as this kind of like lawless and desperate place where people were living while they were waiting and trying to get across. Um, and for a long time there was this huge debate of what should we do about the jungle and what should we do about this camp as opposed to what should we do about the people who are forced to live in the camp. It was what the vibe that I got and do get from a lot of the kind of news related discussions of this issue. Moving forward to today, the original jungle has been cleared, um, a lot of the people who were there were redirected to other places, and the actual area where that camp was has been fenced off to prevent people from camping there again. Which in itself begins to illustrate just how powerfully illogical the whole approach is, because if you can't camp there, but you have no home and nowhere else to go, what are you going to do? You camp elsewhere. And that is what has happened. So there are now multiple small camps around Calais. There is a significant ca camp in Dunkirk and there are large numbers of people now based in Brussels, in a park in Brussels. In terms of healthcare, because that is always my perspective, it's what I work in and it's why I was there, the access to healthcare is extremely limited. For people without papers, particularly in Belgium, they will receive next to no treatment from formal healthcare systems. Around France things vary quite a lot. Um, I'm by no means an expert in this, so I don't want to overstep by saying too much. So the big organisations such as Médecins du Monde, Médecins Sans Frontières and the Red Cross are all present at some sites to some capacity, but not enough for the need that people have. And frankly, it should astonish and pain us that we need these organisations, that between France and Britain we can't work it out for ourselves. I really don't want to go on for too long about this because I'm conscious that, you know, you tuned into this because you thought I was going to talk about books, so I should get onto the books pretty soon. So on a more heartwarming note, there is a large and sustained volunteer effort ongoing with amazing people like RCK, that's Refugee Community Kitchen, going out and getting a hot meal to everyone that they can reach every single day. There is Care for Calais who are providing hair clippers and phone chargers and distributing clothes while at the same time trying to preserve some degree of choice and some degree of dignity in that. There is a Catholic association called Secure Catholic, said that really badly, who run a day centre with like board games and a multilingual bookshelf, 
see, I'm just trying to work in references to books here. And there is of course FAST, the group that I was with, who provide first aid. Things that, you know, shouldn't really be first aid, should probably be done via your GP, but there, there is no kind of GP service, there's no dental service, there's, there's, there's no, there's none of the things that we take for granted. Um, especially in the UK where we have a system like the NHS, we just assume that we are able to access a pharmacist when we want some Lemsip because we've got a cold. And there's just none of that. And there's also an issue in France wherein basic over-the-counter medicines are much more expensive. They seem to be much more expensive than they are in the UK. Things like multivitamins are just really hard to get hold of. And obviously people shouldn't need multivitamins if they can rely on having a healthy balanced diet, but it just shows you how all of the kind of social determinants of health are working together to really disadvantage people who are not able to get to a stable living environment. So all of the associations that I've just mentioned do have YouTube channels, I will link them below and if you are interested in them you can check them out and I would highly recommend if you do have the, the, the time and the will to give some time and some energy to these groups, even if you don't have the first aid experience to come with FAST, to check them out basically and, and, and see if that's something that you would be able to do. At the moment, FAST really needs more experienced first aiders to go out to Calais, which is where the association is based. We have like a storage unit in Calais and then we go out to the other sites as and when in order to be able to provide care to people essentially every day. And that's why I would really love it um, if you would take the five minutes to watch that um, Introducing FAST video and share it with anyone you may know who might be up for volunteering or otherwise because we all know how the YouTube algorithms work just by watching it. And if you appreciate it in any way by liking it, you can and just let YouTube know that even though it's from a tiny channel that doesn't have like any subscribers or any real content yet that it is interesting and worthwhile and, and worth kind of like uh, showing to people as it were. And if you think that what FAST is doing is in any way valuable, if you have a space in a video of your own to give just like a teeny tiny teeny tiny diddy little momentary shout out to FAST then that would be amazing. You know I don't ask you to like and subscribe to my channel at the ends of my videos because I kind of figure out that if you want to you will do. Like I assume that you are an adult and you are able to decide whether or not you like my content well enough to click that little bell icon. But I am asking for this because it's not for me, it's for the people who benefit from having access to first aiders where they otherwise would not. So yeah, that's why I asked for that. At this point, I would show you some cool photos of the people who benefit from FAST being there, but I can't because of privacy and confidentiality reasons, so sorry for that lack of kind of interest. Okay, that's that. Now, I promised at the start that I was going to bring this back to books, and now I will. I would like you and being very demanding in this video, to recommend to me any books that you may know that deal with themes of migration, asylum seeking, refugee status, borders, the kind of politics of Europe today, the movement of people, really um, anything that relates to this issue that I can read to help to educate myself on this topic. I am seeking to learn more about this, to understand it better, because especially over the last few years I feel like I have drifted away from that attempt, that kind of rigorous understanding of our world that I used to seek out. I think largely as a result of a sense of despair following the Brexit referendum. After that I kind of almost shot out politics because I felt like um, it was something over which I could have no uh, influence, but I'm kind of beginning to change my thinking on that again. And I just want to get back on top of things and just to understand why we have the situations that we have a little bit more. I am open to any recommendations, which is not to say that I will read every single book because my reading pace is incredibly slow of late, but I will be looking to see whether I can get any of your recommendations from the library or from the university or I'll be trying to get hold of some different books to kind of expand my understanding of this. They're doing some gas works in the street, so sorry if there's like disruption noises. The one book that I have read lately that does directly address this topic is, I read it on the Kindle, The Line Becomes a River by Francisco Cantu. I read this earlier this year because Roz mentioned it to me, and basically The Line Becomes a River is a memoir that looks at the US-Mexico border from the perspective of a border patrol guard. So Francisco Cantu worked for several years on the border stopping people from get, getting across, that was like his role. I think that this is a very valid perspective to listen to when trying to understand what goes on at a border. In fact, the author actually lists his desire to understand the border as one of the reasons he decided to go into this job. So it kind of talks a little bit about that aspect and looks at other people's kind of motivations for doing that work as well. I don't often read memoirs, I don't tend to like them very much, but this one was okay. I really liked the way in which he wove in at least some of the history of the border into his words. 
Objectively speaking, I know it's a memoir, but it was really just way too much about him, about Cantu. Too many of his dreams made it in, which to me is just a waste of paper, I don't care. And I also really felt like he was trying to set himself up almost as the victim here, presenting himself as experiencing a level of moral distress at being different from other border guards, as, be as having to recover from his time at the border and like being really like um, having some harrowing feelings about it in a way that glosses over the fact that he was the one with the gun in this situation, you know? Like, he was the one who had the choice to be there. I think he tried to exculpate himself with this. He tried to focus on scenes that showed him as compassionate, as thoughtful, or even simply as uncertain, even though he also says things that are very tacit admission of some quite severe moral crimes. And I call them moral crimes because I'm sure he would not be punishable for them by law with the US having the situation that it has with regard to the Mexico border. But it did convey some of the tension of the role, I suppose. What I would say about this book is that it really really opened my eyes regarding some of the issues surrounding borders and then I went to Calais and had my eyes opened again or opened further but having the groundwork from this book kind of helped me to put what I was seeing into context. Someone who I was volunteering with explained to me like this, anywhere that there is a hard border there will be illegal activity across that border no matter how high the fences are and a big part of that relates to shifting people and shifting drugs. In The Line Becomes a River, Cantu talks about how people are persuaded to become drugs mules and when they're caught they bear that record without any impact on the actual cartel. And he also talks about migrants being literally held to ransom and their families being forced to pay to release them and to get them across the border. I didn't know it at the point of reading this but these same things are thought to happen as people are trafficked through Europe and I've definitely heard accounts that would seem to suggest that. Towards the end of this book, he makes friends with a Mexican man without papers who gets stuck on the wrong side of the border. And one of the most powerful points in Cantu's memoir is when he actually hands over the story to this friend and he shares that friend's experience directly as the friend relates how he will keep trying to get across and keep trying to get into the US no matter how many times he fails because his life is there and his family is there and the same is true for the people I met so you know I met someone who had worked for three years in a shop in Wembley before being deported what's he trying to do get back to Wembley get back to his shop, get back to his life. I met a boy whose only family is his sister and his uncle who live in Huddersfield, which is a town really close to where I live. And where does he want to be? Huddersfield, obviously. There's no mystery to it. It's just normal human motivation for wanting to get to a place where you are going to be able to live your life freely and fully. And I think sometimes the way that we can talk about these issues in the news can ignore the fact that every person involved is a person and an individual and they have reasons and they have good reasons for wanting to do what they want to do and they have reasons why uh, they aren't one of the people who stopped in Germany, they aren't one of the people who stopped in Sweden or they aren't one of the people who stopped in Italy because they have a rational motivation for the journey that they are undertaking and they have plans and they have goals and they have desires and wishes as well as needs. I feel like I'm not articulating this um, perfectly well so I'm going to move on anyway because this video is already longer than I intended it to be and probably more of a rant as well than I intended it to be but I hope that it's been of some interest let me know if, if this was completely irrelevant and you hated it just so that I'll know never ever ever to mention this kind of stuff on booktube ever again if not though please do watch the fast video and check out the links below if you if you are intrigued and give me your recommendations of books please so that I can be more well informed and well equipped to deal with the situation that I'm working in as a volunteer so yeah, thank you very much for watching and I hope I will speak to you soon. I am excited for some of the booktube things that are coming up over the next couple of months, specifically Jane Austen July. Whether or not I will make any videos is completely another story, but I will be there watching, not necessarily commenting, but watching. Probably three weeks after you've posted the video, I will be watching it. So anyway, yeah, might speak to you soon, I might not speak to you soon, but either way, happy reading and take care of yourself. And I might just borrow a sentence from Kelly from books I'm not reading, just be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Goodbye.